fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. With his great horse, Silver, and his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains fought crime and criminals throughout the western United States. His name has not come down to us in the written pages of history, but no man did more to bring law and order to the frontier. The cry of high Silver was the battle cry of justice. Now return with us down the trail of adventure to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofs of Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! They're opening home, sir, land the settlers! Tano's waiting for us! Come on, Silver! In the early days of the West, when land was to be had for the asking, farmers came from Ohio, Iowa, and Minnesota and from the far eastern seaboard to the new country. Government troops guarded the boundary of the territory, waiting for the cannon signal that would start prairie schooners into the newly opened homestead lands. As far as the eye could see, wagons were lined up, ready for the dash in the morning. The folk sang in groups around the campfires. Inside their wagon, Aaron Stewart and his wife Mary are talking. Now, Aaron, don't you worry so about me. I'll be all right as soon as we get settled. Sure you will, honey. It's been a mighty hard trip over land, but it'll be worth it. Tom Granville and me have a place all picked out. We're going to race for it as soon as the cannon fires, and we'll go partners. Aaron, I wouldn't trust Tom Granville too far if I was you. Now, Mary. I know you think it's silly of me, but well, there's something about Tom Granville that I don't like. And that friend of his that, that he calls Skeets is even worse. You shouldn't say things like that, honey. Tom Granville's been right friendly with me. He's been friendly, but he's never yet done anything that he didn't get the best of. It. Oh, shucks. Half your sickness is just from worry. Maybe so. I've been expecting to see him try some underhanded scheme ever since we left the East. And he hasn't, so that ought to prove he's on the level. I wish you hadn't told him about the place you located when you rode on ahead to look around. But I had to tell him. Shucks, I was out here long before the wagon started. That's why I went all the way back east again. Tom Granville will do you out of that land, Aaron, if you don't watch your step. Don't say that, huh? But it's so. He's had a grudge again you ever since I married you instead of him. <laughs> Nonsense, honey. Well, don't you remember how I had to argue with him to get him to come out here with us? That was because you wanted him to stake you to the cash to get here. I know where the best trip of land in the whole country is to be found. I know. Good water, good timber, right at the foot of the hill, and good grazing. It's prime. If you can get it. I'll get it all right. We've got the best team of horses, the wagon all set to roll. But if someone else gets there first and files papers... They won't. You just wait and see. What if Tom Granville gets there first and decides that he'll claim it for his own? Shucks, there's plenty for two people there. 
sure hope you're right, Aaron. That's all I can see. I hope you're right. Everything's going to be fine. Now, don't you worry, honey. You're just sort of let down from a long, hard trip. Hey there, Aaron. Oh, there. That's Tom now. You just stay right here and try and get some sleep, honey. I'll go see what he wants. Hey, Aaron. You in your wagon? I'm coming. Aaron, I want to talk to you. A little business. Sure. What's on your mind? It's about that money I loaned you. Oh, that. Oh, yeah. Step over here, Tom. Mary's kind of worried and nervous tonight. Suits me. I reckon this is as good a place as any, ain't it? Now, what about the cash I owe you? Two hundred dollars, I believe. I got your note here. Oh, sure. I reckon you can read it. it. says it's payable on demand. If you ain't got the cash to pay it, I can levy on your goods. Well, that's what I put in the paper, but you know time... I'm is... demanding a 200 now. Yeah. Yeah, what? If you ain't the cash, I'll take your horses. But you can't do that, Tom. If you take them horses, how'll I get to the land we're going after? I don't know how you'll get there, but I reckon I'll make it all right. Did you tell him about it, Granville? Yes, Keats, I told him. Keats, he can't be. I told him he'd take his team instead of the cash if he didn't have the cash. Yep, that's fair enough. You ought to be glad to sell that team of horses for $200. But you can't do that, Granville. I located that land I told you about. It's me that found it. I'm the one that brought you out here. I don't reckon you'll have trouble finding another strip of land for yourself. You're doing me out of the land, Granville. You can't get away with it. No? <laughs> I don't know why I can't. You planned this all the time. You mule you Remember a few years back, Aaron, when you done me out of the girl I love? I didn't. She chose me instead of you, that's all. It wasn't my fault. Save your wind, Aaron. But Mary's sick. You know she's sick. What'll I do if everyone goes and leaves me stranded here? She's your wife and your worry. Not mine. Now, look here, Granville. I'll tell you what I'll do. You go ahead, take the land. Take it for yourself. Just leave my horses here. I'll find some other land. You better find some way to head back east where you come from, Aaron. That's the place for you. But I can't even get back there if you don't leave me horses. That's too bad. I reckon them's the horses pegged down over yonder, Skeets. Go take them and lead them over next to ours. You're all right. Too bad we gotta do this. But it's all legal. There's your paper, Aaron. I'm marking it paid in full. <laughs> and now you don't owe me nothing. <laughs> Grandpa, listen, wait. Skeet, you can't do this. <laughs> Get up there. Get along. Oh, wait a minute. You can't leave me stranded here. Well, you can't do it. You know Mary's sick. You can't do it with your horse. When Tom Granville led his horses away, Aaron was desperate. Leaving his own wagon, he went from one family to another, asking, begging, beseeching that they help him. But you got four horses. You can let me take a couple. Sorry, Aaron. I need all four of mine. Just let me take one. Just one. I can't stay stranded here. Can't do it, partner. Got a heavy load. I'll need all my horses. Gotta help me. My wife is sick. Can't do it. We'll be spread out so far we never see you again. But I'll give you my word. I'll return the horse. I can't move from here without some sort of horse. Sorry, Aaron. But starting with the cannon in the morning, it's every man for himself. We ain't a wagon train no more. We're all racing against one another to find a place to settle on. you got to help me. you got to do it for my wife's sake. I tell you, she's sick. My husband died on the way over, Aaron. But we... we got to get horses. Sorry, Aaron. Ain't got none to spare. Clem, you can help me. Let me hitch my wagon on the back of yours. You've got oxen. They can pull two wagons. Sorry, Aaron. Then take my wife on your wagon. Take her with you and leave me here. My wagon's heavy enough as it is, Aaron. Sorry. I've got to have help. Sorry, Aaron. Well, we'll be stranded. I'm sorry, Aaron. Oh, please. Sorry, Aaron. We got over here. Sorry, Aaron. Get out. Help me, Aaron. Oh, Help me, Aaron. Sorry, Aaron. Oh, Aaron. Oh, Aaron. Oh, Aaron. Oh, Aaron. Oh, Aaron. Bless you, Mary. I'm glad you're asleep. 
makes it some easier. You won't have to know till morning. Oh, Mary, how can I ever tell you that Tom Granville's double-crossed us? Aaron. Oh, Mary, you, you're awake. I'm awake, Aaron. I heard what Tom Granville said to you. I suspected something of the sort all along. Mary, what'll we do? He's never got over the happiness we've known since we were married, Aaron. That's why I did it. I, I'm kind of glad he, he did. Glad? I knew all along he'd do something to get even. That's his nature. Now he'll leave us alone. It, it might have been worse. But, honey, it couldn't be no worse. In the morning, everyone will be dashing out for the land. Everyone but us. I know. They'll leave us here. We'll be stranded. Oh, Mary, I've brought you all the way out here to let you starve. Oh. Mary, what's the matter? Aaron, look. The back of the wagon. That man, he, he's mad. Please don't be afraid of me. Who are you? You've been trying to borrow horses. Yes. I heard about your trouble. But you're masked. You ain't one of us. No. I'm one of the people of this country, Aaron. Don't lose heart. Let the others go ahead tomorrow. Wait here until they've all gone. Who are you? Keep your hopes up, Aaron. This is a great and glorious country, and there's lots of land for everyone. Let the others go on without you, and keep your courage high. I'll be back. Aaron, who was that man? Aaron! Early the next morning, an army bugle sounded a warning call. And pioneers, with their horses hitched, families and luggage safely loaded, whips and reins in hand, awaited the cannon. Hundreds of men leaned forward eagerly, their whips ready to lash their horses into frantic speed at the signal to break new land for homesteading. Then suddenly... They've gone, Mary. They've all gone but us. Don't give up hope, Aaron. Don't give up hope yet. There's nothing to hope for now, Mary. That masked man last night. I don't take much talk in what he said. But I do. There was something about the way he spoke, Aaron. And I was right. Look, there he comes. See him? And there's another rider with him. But but it don't seem possible. It's an engine with him. And they're both riding white horses. Look at them come. I see them, but don't I... Don't give up yet, Aaron. We're still alive. And while we're alive, we can still hope. Oh, the silver. Oh, oh, oh. Wait, there's anyone. Oh, my God. We'll hitch our horses to your wagon, Aaron, and pull you into the homestead land. Donald, <coughs> harness our horses. Uh, me do them. But it's too late, stranger. No, it isn't. There's land that won't be claimed by anyone. It, it won't be claimed. What do you mean, stranger? That just don't sound like sense. After you're settled there, we'll suggest to Tom Granville that no one knows the secret that land holds. It isn't desirable to look at, and everyone will pass it by except those who know the secret. The, the secret? But what is a secret? You'll find out when you get there. Ready, Tonto? Uh, We're taking Aaron and his wife to their new home. <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Aaron and his wife Mary were deprived of their horses on the eve of the dash into newly opened homestead lands. Tom Granville planned to claim for his own the land he and Aaron had agreed to hold jointly. After the wagons had left, the Lone Ranger and Tonto hitched their horses to Aaron's wagon and drew it to land that looked undesirable. It was a narrow strip at the foot of a hill. Aaron looked out of his wagon when the stop was finally made and was surprised to see that it joined the hillside land that Granville had claimed. Granville approached the wagon, saying, Oh, you finally got here, eh? With a help of an engine and a mask out, Lord. Hold on now, Granville. Well, you can take yourself off. I don't aim to settle on your land. Well, what are you doing here? Move on. You ain't claimed this narrow strip at the foot of the hill. There ain't enough room here to do anything with. Nevertheless, Aaron Stewart is going to claim his acreage on the hill. On the hill? <laughs> The only part in the hill that ain't been claimed is too steep to do anything with. Well, as it's the only land that ain't been claimed, it's the only land I can get, ain't it? All right. And take the narrow strip where you are, and the steep slope above, and see that just stay on your own land. Skeets, come here. Yes, Tom. What's the trouble? Aaron aims to settle next to us. If he sets foot on my land, shoot him. He'd better keep off on our land. You hear that, Aaron? See if you keep off. You've sure turned ornery all of a sudden, Granville. Just how do you figure you can live on that hill? I'm going to dig myself a cave. A cave? <laughs> That's a good one. It'll <laughs> do to keep the rain off of us, and I'll be on my own land. See that you stay there. And what's more, when your food runs out, don't come around begging for me. We'd sooner starve and ask a favor of you, Tom Granville. Come on, Skeets. Let's go and leave these blame fools to dig their cave. Remember what we told you, Aaron. Some things are more valuable than level water land. I will, stranger, and a thousand thanks. Come on, Silver. In the fortnight that followed, Aaron dug a cave in the hillside and made a shelter for himself and his wife. Meanwhile, Granville and his partner Skeets kept close watch on everything Aaron Stewart did. They saw him take a shovel full of earth from various parts of the hill, wash it, and then carefully examine the dirt that remained. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger and Tonto camped nearby, and each evening Tonto reported Aaron Stewart's progress to the masked rider. Tonto, watch him close. Is Aaron doing what we told him? Uh, him, him do plenty good digging dirt. <laughs> And uh, washing it and digging more dirt? Not right. Tell me, Tonto, is the man who swindled him washing? Him watch all time. If ever a man deserved justice, it's Aaron Stewart. And if ever a man deserved punishment, it's Tom Granville. Uh, maybe Aaron Fuller get even. I think tomorrow, Tonto, it'll be a good idea for you to take this dust and go to Granville's land while I ride for the government office at Pine Ridge. Uh, Tonto, go. You know what you're to do? Tonto, no. I know Mr. Dixon at Pine Ridge, and I think we can count on his help in this situation. I'll deal with him while you go and call on Tom Granville. The next morning, when Granville and Skeets looked toward the foot of the hill, they saw Tonto industriously engaged in washing out dirt that he'd taken from their land. Quickly, the two made their way to him and watched him for a while. Say, you. Mm -hmm. What are you doing here? This here's my lane. Maybe you let Indian have dirt, huh? We don't let no one have nothing. Now get out of here. Me not want much. Hold on a minute. What do you want that dirt for, Injun? You own hill yonder, too? No. What do you want to know for? Maybe you get fortune on land. You look, look here in pan. What do you mean? Me wash him dirt. Look what left. You see small speck? Yellow speck? Jumping snakes, pod. It's gold. Gold? Give me that pan, Injun. No, you give me dirt. I'll see about that. Where did all this come from? Is it all around my land? It washed down from hill, maybe. From the hill? Washed down? Then they must be... Skeets, I gotta talk to Aaron. He won't be any too glad to see you, Granville. No matter, I'm going now. Wait here and don't let this engine take anything off our land. I'll be back soon enough. You not give Tonto dirt? No! Get out of here! Hey, Moose, beat it! I'm not going to stand having you around stealing what's mine. There's Mary over yonder now, Skeets. I'll be right back. Mary! Hey there! What do you want? Where's Aaron? I got to talk to him. He ain't here, and I don't want nothing to say to you. Get off in our land. But this is important. I got to speak to him. Well, you can. I told you he ain't here. Where'd he go? I don't know. Like as not to the government office. That's where he was heading for. The government office? Yep. In Pine Ridge. On foot? Sure on foot. You got the only horses we had. 
Keats, I gotta hurry. If what I think is right, I gotta go to the government office myself. Get you up a horse. Quick. <laughs> In the government office in Pine Ridge, the agent looked up from his desk and saw the Lone Ranger, his face disguised, framed in the doorway. Good morning, Dixon. You, great Scott man, I'm glad to see you. You won't be glad when I tell you what I came for. I'll close the door. You want me to help you out on something? Exactly. And it won't be pleasant for you, Dixon. But what is it? First, I'm going to tie and gag you and put you on the floor behind the counter. (laughs) I guess you know what you're doing. It'll be all right. Here's my hands. I'll make it easy for you. Good. It won't take long. What's up, anyhow? I'd give a lot to know, but I can guess one thing. Yes? You want something here in the office fixed the way it shouldn't be, and you want to save my skin. I'll not tie it so tight it'll hurt. Just loosely. Like this. There. And now my feet. Yes, I'll have to tie your ankles. But what's up? Can't you tell me yet? Not yet. You'll know later on. Now, that'll do. The gag. I don't need to. I won't open my trap. Very well. You can say that you were threatened with death if you made a sound. Here comes the man I want to see now. He just stepped from the wagon. On the floor with you. I must take my mask off. I'm down. All right, just in time. I'm Tom Granville. Yes? You're the government manager. Who else did you expect to find in this office? I was just making sure, mister. Will you make a test of this and tell me if it's really gold? Those tiny specks? Right. There isn't enough here to test. You'll have to have more. Yeah, but what's it look like to you? You can tell something that way, can't you? I can't be sure, but it's the same color as gold. It might very well be... The only place around here with a would-be gold, though, is in the hills. Did this come from a hill? Well, maybe so. Maybe from level land. Are you saying there's gold in the hills? Lots of men have found it there. It comes in pockets. Pockets? What's that? The way they find it is to dig in different places in the hill and wash the sand and gravel until they find pay dirt. Then they work to each side until they find dirt that no longer shows a trace of gold. Yeah? Then they dig up the side of the hill in a fan shape to the pocket. They make tests all the time. The pocket may contain thousands of dollars worth of gold in a single bushel of dirt. Gosh almighty. If you found the gold on level land, it's probably near enough to have been washed out of one of those pockets. My gosh, that's just what Aaron was... What? That is, a fellow I know worked just that way. How much gold do you say there was in one of these pockets? Men have taken out as much as $100,000 in a week's time. Thanks, mister. I'll be back. I'll get more of a sample for you. Granville, what you doing here? Hey, it's none of your business. I can go where I want to without being checked on. Hello there, Stuart. Back again with more gold? Yep. I reckon I'll hit the pocket in no time now. I got a couple hundred dollars with me in this here sack. He's gone. We're waiting outside to speak to you, Aaron. Thank you, stranger. Is is it all right to carry on as we planned? It's it perfectly ain't... all right, Aaron. When you and he come back in, I'll be gone. Dixon, the man in charge, will take care of you. If it works out like you say it should, I'll never be able to thank you enough. I'm downright glad to see your face without a mask. It isn't my face that you see, Aaron. Tell to help me disguise myself. Here, take this. It looks like money. He's watching through the window? Yes. Now leave here and whistle as you go. Look as if you had no troubles at all. I'll do just what you say, mister. Hey. Aaron. I want to talk to you. Well? I've been trying to see you. It's hard to say, but... I'm sorry for the way I've treated you, and I'd like to square things. It's a fine time to say that. If we'd count on you, we'd been dead a long time ago. Yeah, I know it, Aaron. But you don't know what it can do to a man to lose the girl he loves. I've been trying to get up my courage to see you a dozen times. Yeah? I just went local for a while, seeing you two married. Well? I'd give you a pretty bad deal, Aaron. Now I'm willing to give you half the land I've got, if you still go by that partnership thing we agreed on. Half the land you got, huh? You mean the land you swindled me out of? Yeah, I did a pretty mean trick. Then I reckon we ain't much more to say. Wait a minute, Aaron. You don't say every things. I'm offering you the land you wanted and surveyed and trade for the land you're on now. We could swap half and half. Nope. I reckon I'll hold on to what I got. If I deal with you, you'll like as not swindle me again sometime. Besides that, I got plans to get rich off my claim. But I found gold on mine. See? Here's some specs of it. Did the fellow inside tell you it was gold? We sure it is, but I gotta get some more of it to get it tested. It's sure enough gold. Ever figured that there might be more in my hill? What do you think I laid claim to the hill for? Then how would you like to sell some of your land? Huh. To you? Sure. That don't appeal to me none. The less I have to do with you, the better I like it. I'll tell you what, though. If you get the idea that you'd like to prospect for gold, I'll deal with you. How? Well, prospecting don't appeal to me much. It's a little hard on Mary. What's your proposition? I like farming, and I want to be able to grow things and live comfortable. 
if you want to swap land just as it stands and throw in the house you built and the horses for my hill and the cave I dug, why... Hey, you mean swap even? I have whatever I find? Yep, that's right. But you're getting the best of it even so. It's done. It's a deal. You got your papers with you? Yep, I have. You? Sure. Come on in with me and we'll get the government agent to fix it up right now. But mind you, Granville, I ain't making no promises. I don't guarantee you'll get rich on that hill. I'll take that chance. <laughs> Come on inside. It was late afternoon when Aaron finally returned to Mary, and we find him laughing as Mary says. But Aaron, what happened at the office? I wish you'd seen Granville's face when he learned that the real government man had been tied behind the counter. But he made the deal, Aaron. Yep, he made it, and then found there was nothing but fool's gold in those sacks. And even that didn't come from this hill. I don't know what you mean. Mean, honey? It means we're taking over Granville's claim, and he gets this no-count hill. Oh, Aaron. That ain't all, hon. I got his horses and wagon, too. And if he tries to move us off the land, he'll have the whole U.S. Army after him. And our land is what he's been living on? Sure. Well, now we got to vacate this old cave so Skeets and Granville will have a place to live. From now on, this is their property. But, Aaron, how, how did it ever happen? We have the Lone Ranger to thank for that, Mary. He's got us fixed up in great shape. We've got the best section of land in the whole state, and Tom Granville has the worst. Oh. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>